So I get asked very frequently about my gaming slash streaming setup. So I figured it's been about a year since I've actually done an update. Um, ever since I've changed my setup from what it was before, which was actually pretty damn horrible, I figured why not take this opportunity to go ahead and show you guys my new and improved 2020 gaming slash streaming setup. Now before we actually get into the actual gaming slash streaming setup, let me go ahead and show you guys kind of the backdrop whenever I do my live streams. I actually set it up a little bit before I go live and before I make any kind of videos. Uh, so let's go ahead and go over everything right now. This as you see is my backdrop for my streaming setup. Um, currently I've got like LEDs set up behind my piano and then I also have a couple LEDs right here. Um, basically those are just little tiny floodlights that just kind of flood the wall with any color. Right now it's like a purplish pinkish and then I got that to contrast with it. Um, but yeah, over here you have my router set up. This is my modem, this is my router. I've got the XR500 Netgear router. Probably one of the best routers I could ever recommend to people. Uh, really good router um, for what it is. Google Home and then um, just some speakers. This is my backdrop. Basically, I've got the QS framed logo right here. This, a um, one of my moderators made for me. It's really awesome painting and I uh, really love it. A couple Rubik's Cubes and stuff like that. <laughs> this is the origin of uh, Quadraneros, where I came up with my, with my name. A lot of people ask where I got my name from. It's actually from Star Wars, believe it or not. If you know who Ben Quadraneros is in Star Wars, um, then you'll know. Just Google that and look it up on YouTube. You'll understand. Um, anyways, I got some Naruto pops up here and then a Naruto statue. Um, so that's basically just the backdrop. So whenever you guys are watching me live, that's what you're seeing in the background. Sometimes it's hard to see unless I'm full screen, but it does add a, a little bit of ambiance and a little bit of color per se. But that is an important part of any kind of streaming slash gaming setup is kind of like a backdrop. Now for the moment of truth what you guys click this video for. First of all, before I show you guys anything, I'm gonna link in the description. Please go ahead and watch the first setup video where you guys can see where I actually came from before I did uh, this setup. Um, but it has updated since then, so I'm gonna go ahead and kinda go over some of those and then just kinda briefly show you guys what is all behind the scenes basically from when I uh, stream what you guys don't really ever see. So anyways, here it is guys. This is my gaming slash streaming setup. Uh, a couple things you probably have noticed already if you've watched my first video have changed. Um, I've made a couple additions to my setup. Um, so we're gonna just going to go over and just work our way in. First of all, you've got the Secret Lab Omega chair. This is like a cloth material. Um, it's actually a, actually a very good chair, um, especially if you have pets. Um, it's easy to keep the hair off of. All you got to do is just take a lint roller or vacuum to it. And then if a cat claws it, it doesn't really show up. So if you have like a cat or something, um, I would suggest getting the a, a, a cloth a cloth chair versus a leather chair. By the way, sorry if you guys hear any thunder in the background. It is currently thunderstorming here in Florida. Anyways, we are gonna move on to my computer. This is the PC that I use. Um, it's a, uh, it, it is a pre-built. I get a lot of hate because it's not a custom-built PC, but there is something you guys need to know, and let me just tell you face-to-face, -face, I do not know how to build a computer, okay? So therefore, I found the computer pre-built with the next best thing with all the specs that I needed, and it works perfectly fine for me. So don't, if you don't feel like, if you're just starting out, please don't feel that you need to build a PC in order to do this. I mean, is it better to do? Probably, but do you have to do it? Absolutely not. So this was just easier for me. It works for me. It's a great PC. It has all the specs that I need to stream and to record videos, but yeah, so. Um, I did have to end up getting a new SSD. That was the only thing that was uh, wrong with this thing. Um, I ended up getting, I forget exactly which one it is. It's, it's, I know it's a Samsung, um, but I did get an upgrade on the SSD because it was corrupt. But other than that, this computer has not given me any issues. It's been a really good computer. Um, I will link the computer itself with all the specs in the description, but I buy power, pretty decent. Um, yeah, I have two 24 inch ASUS monitors. One of these is 120 hertz, which is this one, and then this one is 144 hertz, which is the one I do my gaming on. Um, this one is actually pretty much made for gaming, but this one's a two millisecond response, this one's a one millisecond response, so obviously 
I'm gonna use that one for my gaming. Mouse and keyboard I actually went ahead and replaced. I don't do any kind of PC gaming, so I went with wireless, obviously just to save space and for flexibility. And I went ahead and changed the color scheme to a blue, kind of the match to computer and everything like that. These have not given me any issues. If I can find these on Amazon, I'll link them in the description. But if you're not on PC, honestly, probably wireless is the way to go because these have been just uh, like total room savers and I can just scoot it away whenever I'm done which is really nice. Now, as for the controller that I use, this looks like a normal PS4 controller, but this actually is not. This is a Battle Beaver controller. I get asked all the time, what kind of controller do you use, Jake? What kind of controller are you using? This is a Battle Beaver controller. This is my favorite controller to use. Um, the reason I like this so much is because you can customize it before you get it, and you can change the thumbsticks on it still. Um, I got the dome thumbsticks, which is what I prefer, and basically what this company will do is they'll take a regular standard controller and modify it. If you've never heard of, ba if you've never heard of Battle Beaver, I do suggest looking them up. You can even have them put the buttons in different areas of the controller, which is unheard of. I think this is the only kind in the business that does something like that. So really look up Battle Beaver. The only negative side I will give them is they do take a very, very long time to get you these controllers. This, especially during the pandemic that's going on right now, this one took me at least like two and a half months to get. Um, but I did have another one that I was using during that time. But that is my controller that I use. Next question that I always get is what kind of camera do I use? This right here is a Logitech Brio 4K. Um, I will be looking to upgrade this camera in the future as my streaming career goes. Um, probably the next step is going to be getting a cam link and getting a DSLR. But for right now, if you want one of the best webcams in the business, this is the one to get. That is again the Logitech Brio 4K. One of the best webcams to get. Otherwise get a Logitech C920. That's literally the staples and streaming basically. Moving on to things that we have changed. I did went ahead and actually upgraded my PS4. I went ahead and got the PS4 Pro. Um, not a big change, but it is a little bit better. It looks better, it has more storage, and it runs way better than the PS4 Standard Edition. Uh, that is something I did change as well. And then as far as other changes, if you haven't noticed already, I do have this baby right here. If you guys don't know what this is, this is amazing it is a go xlr now what is what does this little piece of plastic do basically one it allows you to use an xlr microphone which is way higher quality in my opinion than a usb microphone but not only that it gives you full control over all of your audio so i can control the sound of my microphone i can control the sound of my pc i can control the sound of my console and my voice chat all with these knobs right here. And I can even do it, which this is pretty cool. Watch this. You can bring up the software and you can even control it on the software. So if I wanna turn my mic down, it moves by itself. So that's probably one of the coolest things ever. Um, and then you can even set up different things like uh, different profiles to where it'll change, different sound settings, different colors, everything like that, you can really customize this. These are a little expensive, they're more on the pricier side, around $400, so if uh, you're just starting out, I honestly wouldn't suggest it, but if you're getting into streaming full time, I'd say this is a must. This, I feel like, is going to be a staple in streaming in the future, if it isn't already. Um, so if you're looking to get full time, or if you're getting more serious with streaming, go ahead and cop one of these bad boys, and uh, cop an XLR microphone of some kind, Trust me, you won't regret it. Now the next thing I just touched briefly upon was this bad boy right here. Again, sorry if you guys hear the thunder in the background. It's really starting to come down now. I think we have like a, a thunderstorm warning or we're, under, we're in a thunderstorm, I mean, so. <laughs> but anyways, um, this microphone is amazing. It is the Shure SM7B. Now, if you're a streamer and you're full time, you probably already know what this microphone is. It's an XLR microphone very high quality fun fact they actually use this to record a michael jackson song i forget which song i think it was thriller um but they actually use these microphones in the in the music video which is actually pretty cool let me just see if i can get a better f yeah there that looks better um but really really good quality 
uh, microphone. It's a dynamic microphone. If you guys don't know anything about it, <laughs> trust me, I was there. I don't know much about it either, but I just know it's a dynamic microphone. Um, I've got that attached to my new and improved Rode arm. This will be also linked in the description. Um, the cable just runs through here. I just got some Velcro straps attached to it. And then that runs into my Go XL XLR soundboard. Um, amazing microphone, amazing mic arm. This is, a, I think it's like $100 on Amazon, but is it worth it? Definitely, um, especially if you're streaming full time or if you're looking to be uh, more serious with streaming. Sturdy, durable, holds onto your desk very well. Uh, I don't have one complaint about this. It even comes with uh, the Velcro strap right here. Um, so you can tie like, you know, your wires to it and keep everything neat and tidy. So definitely do suggest that. Next thing we got going on here is my headset and my headset stand. Nothing has changed here besides the fact that I use these Astros and now that they're attached to the back of my Go XLR. So I can hear my game volume. I can hear the people I'm playing with and I can hear my computer and music. And not only that, you can hear yourself through your microphone if you cho so choose to do so with this device. I actually do listen to the sound of my voice and you do get used to it after a while. It's a little weird at first, but it actually helps, especially when you're using your sound effects on your Go XLR, which is another amazing thing about the Go XLR. You have sound effects, you have sensors, you have a mute button and different things like that, which is really cool. But um, Astro A40s honestly are one of the best headsets in the business in my opinion. They do last so long. I've had these since like 2011. Uh, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it in the long run. My uh, Elgato HD60S is back here. I do have two big lights. Now these lights actually help illuminate the whole room really well and uh, lights up my face really well. So if you're looking for lights, just go to Home Depot or something and get these big clamp lights and then get a daylight white LED and it projects like a perfect like bright white light. That really rhymes really well. Make sure you get daylight. Daylight LEDs are the ones that you want to look for. Um, especially if you're just using just your light. Replace them with daylights and trust me, it looks so much better on screen. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick review over the actual desk that everything is held up upon. The whole entire setup is held by this wonderful desk right here. Um, I'm going to give you guys the list of pros and cons of this desk in my opinions, obviously. Um, this is an Arazi gaming desk. I'll have it linked in the description. but. This desk has lasted me very long and um, has been very sturdy and I really don't have too much negative to say about it. Uh, if you see here, it's about five feet in length, about three feet in width, and then it has this nice little curve on it. Um, it's held up by two metal beams sort of things. Um, and then underneath the desk, it comes with a net. Now, um, a lot of gaming setups have wires hanging down and stuff like that. Well, this net actually really helps to catch all these wires so that way it helps you uh, one keep things more simple looking and then two keep things more organized so that's one really good thing about this desk the next cool thing I do like about this desk is it comes with a uh, giant mouse pad basically that goes over the top of the desk so if I lift it up right here you can see that here's the hard desk itself and then there's the mouse pad. Now, pros and cons. There are some cons against this mouse pad. First thing that I noticed over time, it collects dust, it collects hair, it collects all kinds of things. Um, so, do have a lint roller on standby, and you can also wash this, which is actually cool. This thing is machine washable, believe it or not. But, let's be real. Do I wanna take apart my whole entire setup just to wash this thing? Absolutely not. Um, so, lint rollers are your best friend. The little air compressors are your best friend. Those are your best friends for this desk. And you can also, I found a trick, you can use like a microfiber uh, rag, uh, wet it with a little bit of a all-purpose cleaning solution, and actually just dust it down and wipe it off cleanly. Um, so, is it a deal breaker? I wouldn't say it is. Um, just because it's so worth it because you don't have to ever worry about having any kind of other mouse pad But it is uh, There is some upkeep to it. You do have to maintain it um, the other negative side which isn't like a big deal breaker, but It's not completely flush to the desk. So it hangs off about half an inch 
Um, Arazi says that it shrinks over time, but it really has not done that for me. Maybe it will for you, but for me it has not. The other um, pro to this desk is... Wow. Okay. Anyways, the other pro to this desk is it does come with three holes in the back to run wires or uh, anything through that you want to run through. Um, I actually have a bunch of my wires running through the back of these holes and you can even run a monitor stand through the hole as well. So as you can see, I've got my dual monitor arm running between that hole attached to it like that. Um, so you can actually have a dual monitor setup, and I believe you can even have a triple monitor setup. Oh, sorry, I just got a call. Hang on. If you go to the uh, Razi Gaming Desk website, uh, you can see that there are more options than what I have uh, that are cheaper, more affordable. The one that I have currently retails at $400 on the website, but I believe you can find it cheaper on other websites as well. Um, but they may come with a warranty on here that I'm not sure of. But they do also have other colors than just black. Uh, they do have a red accent with a design on it, which looks pretty dope. They do have a blue accent with the blue legs, uh, green, the full black, which is what I have. And then they also have white legs with a red accent. Um, so if you're interested in different colors, you can do that to match your uh, kind of style of theme of gaming whatever you guys want for your streaming setup to have. The reason I went with uh, black is because I can pretty much pair it with any color scheme. Uh, so I just kind of went with that and uh, it worked out pretty well for me. So that's pretty much gonna go ahead and do it for this gaming slash streaming setup. Hopefully you guys did find this entertaining in some sort of way and maybe also informational as well for your future gaming setups that you guys want or your streaming setups, whatever have you. But yeah, if you guys want me to do any um, other reviews on any of the other stuff that I have in this, in this video. <laughs> oh shit. But yeah, no, I could actually go into more depth upon the Go XLR or the microphone or even my PC or the desk if you guys are interested in something something like that. If you guys want um, me to explain a little bit more in depth about the, the Go XLR soundboard and the microphone settings and stuff like that, uh, let me know in the comment section. If, um, if I get a bunch of feedback on that, I might make that video. But anyways, I hope you guys did really enjoy this video. I uh, do appreciate you guys. Um, coming in and liking all the videos. Uh, there will be more Alcatraz 30 bombs hopefully soon and uh, Alcatraz gameplays and montages and stuff like that. It really does help when you guys hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, but I really hope you guys have an amazing day. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy y'all. Peace.